So now we are going to talk about activity based costing. This is the next type of costing method in cost accounting and it's also referred to as the ABC method. Very, very convenient for our students. Okay. So when we consider the activity based costing method, there are a couple of things that you need to understand first. Okay. Uh, the first is that activity based costing requires that we identify activity cost pools. An activity cost pool is basically a classification of the type of activity that you're going to be going through in your production process. Now, there are four broad categories that we can divide these into. Uh, the first one would be a unit level activity. The second one would be a batch level activity. Sorry, let's put these just a little bit more together so it'll make our discussion a little bit easier. Okay, so first we will do unit level. Then we will have batch level activities. We will have production product sustaining level. And then we have a facility or operations level. What does unit level activity cost pool indicate? Unit, this type of activity must be done for each unit of production. The machine related activity cost pool represents a unit level activity since every product unit requires machine time. Batch level activities must be performed for each batch of products rather than to each unit. Um, so batch level activities could include setup or purchasing or material handling or quality assurance, etc. Product sustaining levels include activities that are needed to support an entire product line but are not performed every time a new unit or batch of products is produced. Uh, this could include something like an engineering design cost. And facility or operations level activities uh, or, act, uh, yes, um, facility or operations level activities are required in order for the entire production process to occur. So examples of such activity costs include plant management salaries, plant depreciation, product taxes, and property taxes, sorry, plant maintenance and insurance. So if we were just to list or identify the basic types of activities under each activity cost pool, we would put machine related cost pool here, machine related activities here, and in batch level, we would put in setups. We would put in purchasing, material handling, quality assurance, and packing or shipping. And for product sustaining level activity, we'd put an engineering design. And for facility or operations level, we'd put in a facility cost. Okay, so this gives us a basic idea of the sort of categories that we can divide our manufacturing overheads into. Okay, once we understand this, essentially what we want to do is we want to be able to allocate a certain, um, a, we want to be able to allocate a certain dollar amount to each cost pool. And then we want to divide that dollar amount across our different products. 
typically have three different products we divide across product one, product two, and product three, however we may choose to categorize them. Let's take a look at this entire setup with our, with an example question or an example activity. Now we've created an activity-based costing um, layout here. There are 10 columns that we need to look at. We've got activity, activity cost pool, cost driver, cost driver quantity, pool rate, product line, cost driver quantity for product line, activity cost for product line, product line production volume and activity cost per unit of product. What we want to be able to do is we want to classify all the necessary categories in any account into uh, their individual cost pools. So to do so, we will begin with this particular question. This question comes from uh, Ronald Hilton's managerial accounting, ninth edition, chapter number five, problem five dash forty seven. And it is a complete application of all of the knowledge base required for activity based costing. Kitchen, King's, Toledo plant manufactures three product lines, a multi-burner ceramic cooktop, uh, all multi-burner ceramic cooktops. The plant's three pro product models are the regular, the advanced, and the gourmet. Until recently, the plant used a job order product costing system with manufacturing overhead applied on the basis of direct labor hours. The following table displays the basic data upon which the traditional costing system was based. So this is our traditional costing system. In this system, We've been given lots of information. We'll use all of this information step by step. I will not read this case study line by line. Um, I expect you to have the book open in front of you so that you can address all of the necessary information as we go through it step by step. So let's begin with our um, first activity. Okay, uh, we have been a list of activities here. This is our machine related activity. So we will list this here. Okay, our first activity is machine related. Okay, our activity cost pool in this case is 310,500. Our cost driver is not given to us here, neither is our cost driver. Oh, sorry, yes, our cost driver is given to us as machine hours. Our cost driver quantity is not given to us, neither is our pool rate. Our product line is regular, advanced, and gourmet. So we will create those three categories. These will be used again and again, so we'll probably just copy paste them. We'll create one more row for a total over here so that we can continue our calculations. Cost driver quantity for each one is provided, 50,000 for the first, 48,000 for the second, and 17,000 for the third. Here, what we want to do is we want to add up all of the above. So 50,000 plus 48,000, oops, sorry, forgot one there, 48,000 plus, oh no, just one moment, my apologies. Here we go, this plus this 17,000. We have $115,000 here. And this is the same number that we will use for, my apologies, for our pool, Sorry, cost driver quantity. We will just copy the same amount there, 115,000. To calculate our pool rate, we want to take our total activity cost pool and divide that by the cost driver quantity that gives us a pool rate of $2.7 per unit per um, a machine hour. Now, the activity cost for the product line will be calculated by multiplying the pool rate by the cost driver quantity. So we'll say that it's $2.7 multiplied by 50,000 and we get 135,000. 
Okay, let's do something. Let's put this all in handwriting so that you understand how to apply it for your for your exam. Okay, so if we start over here with our first activity, I have a calculator next to me, so I won't have to open the calculator on screen and keep shuffling between Excel and um, calculator and PDF. So let's go ahead and start writing here. Our first activity is machine related. So we will say this is machine related. Our activity cost pool is a neat $310,500. Our cost to driver is based on machine hours. Okay, let's increase the size of these just a little bit. Oopsies. So that we can ride a little bit more comfortably. There we go. This should allow us to ride a little bit more comfortably over here. Okay, our cost to drive a quantity in this particular case. is going to be, we don't have a cost driver quantity here. We do have a product line, so let's fill in that information. Our product line will be regular, advanced, and gourmet. We'll add in a, uh, a row here for total. Cost driver quantity for product line is given to us here. So this is 50,000, 48,000, and 17,000. Okay, now we want to be able to total these three amounts. So using my calculator, I will get 50,000 plus 48,000 plus 17,000. Plus 17,000. And we get 115,000. This is our total cost driver quantity. We'll use this exact same number in this column here. So we put in 115,000 as our cost driver quantity. To calculate our pool rate, we'll take activity cost pool divided by cost driver quantity. So that's 310,500 divided by 115,000. And we get a pool rate of $2.7 per machine hour. Calculate activity cost for the product line. We will do two point seven dollars multiplied by fifty thousand. So we get two point seven multiplied by fifty thousand, and we get one hundred thirty-five thousand for this particular product. Uh, for the advanced product, we'll do two point seven multiplied by four hundred forty-eight thousand. So we get two point seven multiplied by forty-eight thousand. We get one hundred twenty-nine thousand six hundred. And then we have 2.7 multiplied by 17,000 at 45,900. We don't need to take the sum of this. This is current. The sum of this would be irrelevant. To calculate the product, product line production volume, this is the volume. This is information that will be given to you here. If we come up to our basic information, we've been told that our production volume in units is for the regular, it is 5,000. We'll come back over here and we'll start penning this in. So 5,000 units for the regular, 4,000 units for the advanced, and 1,000 units for the gourmet. To calculate the activity cost per unit of our product, we'll do 135,000, that's activity cost for product line, divided by product line production volume. So 135,000 divided by 5,000. 135,000 divided by 5,000, we have $27 here. Then we do 129,600 divided by 4,000. We have 32.4. Then we have 45,900 divided by 1,000 units. So that's 45.9. Some basic concepts you should understand here are that the more common or less specialized your product, the lower the cost per unit of product. And the more highly specialized your product or niche, mark, niche marketed, the higher the activity cost per unit of product. This will be very consistent throughout all of the activity 
tools that you work on. And let's go down to the second activity cost pool. We want to be able to hold our top row in place. We're going to freeze that pane. There we go. This way we'll be able to move down in our Excel sheet and not worry about losing our top. There we go. Now that we've completed the machine-related activity, let's do the material activity. So once again, we use the exact same sort of inputs and the exact same process. We have material handling. Our activity cost pool here is 52,500. Our cost driver is production runs. Our cost driver quantity is not given to us, but our product line categorization for all three regular, advanced, and gourmet are given to us. So if regular it is 40, for advanced it is 40 and for gone it is 20. If these were not given to us over here and only production runs were identified, we would go to our basic information and we would see how many production runs we need. We need 40 production runs for regular, we need 40 production runs for advanced, we need 20 production runs for gone and that is how we came up with these particular numbers. Then moving on to calculations, the sum of these will be 100 and this 100 will be used over here. To calculate the pool rate again, it'll be activity cost pool divided by cost driver quantity. So we have 52,500 divided by 100 is 525 dollars. 52,500 divided by 100 gives us 525 dollars per activity. Activity cost for the product line will be pool rate multiplied by cost driver quantity for the product line. So 525 multiplied by 40. For the regular, that's 21,000. Again, it's 21,000 for the second, it's the same 40. And we do 525 multiplied by 20, and we get 10,500 for the third. 10,500. My apologies, there we go. 10,500. The sum of these three numbers should be equivalent to our activity cost pool. So we do 21,000 plus 21,000 plus 10,500, and we get 52,500. And that is the equivalent of our activity cost pool, which tells us the answer is correct. Product line production volume is given to us here. There's 5,000, 4,000, and 1,000. These numbers do not change because the number of units of production do not change. To calculate activity cost per unit of product, we will take activity cost per product line divided by product line production volume. So 21,000 divided by 5,000, we have 4.2. Uh, 40,000 divided by 4,000, sorry, um, <laughs> my bad. 21,000 divided by 4,000, We have 5.25 and 10,500 divided by 1,000 and we get 10.5. Each individual cost, the same principle applies where we have activity cost per unit of product. It is lower for our more conventional products and higher for our specialized products. Now I'll complete the rest of the calculation on my own. Um, and come back to you once I can move on to the next step. Now, what we have in front of us is a calculated 
um, a completely calculated activity-based costing for manufacturing overhead for the given question. We've completed the activity-based costing, and what we want to be able to do now is to calculate the per unit cost in both um, traditional as well as manufacturing overhead situations, I'm uh, sorry, activity-based costing situations. What I like to do in this case is, I like to make a list over here. I'm gonna keep the activity cost per unit of product here in front of me so that it's a little bit easier to do. And I will begin with the, firstly, with the traditional costing um, method. Now, just to understand or just to recap, what we're doing now is calculating product, oops, whoops, oh no. Okay, just one moment. Here we go. Okay, so what we want to do is calculate the product cost. I like to keep the activity cost per unit of product here in front of me. This reminds me it's the first, second, and third. And I want to be able to calculate two or three things together. First of all, I want to calculate the um, product cost according to ABC. according to ABC method. Okay, now to do this, 